I'm Sandy. And I'm Jed. We are currently exploring the Pacific Northwest. In this video, we are leaving the Olympic Peninsula and heading over to beautiful Whidbey Island. The sights and sounds of the Pacific Northwest are being uploaded using Nomad Internet, our choice for internet on the go. If you need your own internet, be sure to check out Nomad Internet in the description below. Good morning. It is super early. Yes, we got up at 5.30 this morning because we need to catch ferry. We are headed over to Whidbey Island and we haven't been to Whidbey Island in years. since Probably like 15 years. When we were in the Navy. So we're really kind of excited to see how the island over there has grown and everything. First we got to manage to get across the water so we are at the Port Townsend Ferry. This ferry line only runs from here over to Coopville which is on Whidbey Island about center of the island. Yeah, so you know you know, I love water, so this is exciting for me. So we have made our way onto the ferry. So as we said, we are leaving Port Townsend and we are headed over to the Coopville area of Whidbey Island. It's been so long since we've been to Whidbey and we're pretty excited to visit. We are. If you don't know, I used to live there for about 10 years and Jed lived there for five when we were in the military. It's actually where we met. So that's kind of cool. Still stuck with him today. Maybe she's taking me over Maybe. here to dump me off. I don't know. I was like, you know, dump them off where you found them, right? Technically, I should dump you off here then. What, you found me here? Well, you were here first. <laughs> I guess that makes sense. Yeah, this morning we're on the 8 a.m. ferry. This is the vessel, the Salish. The Salish. Yeah. Beautiful little ferry here, and it's an absolutely gorgeous morning out here on the water. The water is pretty calm, which is good for me, you know, a non-fan of the water. Gorgeous out here today. Welcome to Whidbey Island. Yes, we have safely arrived on the island. We survived that entire ferry fiasco. And by fiasco, I mean just getting on the ferry. So it's funny, right before they depart, they, they blast their horn one time and I almost jumped out of my skin because I was like right under the horn. But he already knows I hate boats and so like he scared the bejesus out of me. Well, the boat scared the Jesus out of me. <laughs> but anyway, we are here on Whidbey Island. The ferry actually comes in right near the town of Coopville. We decided that our first stop today would be the Price Sculpture Park. This park was not here when we lived on Whidbey Island. We're excited to explore this little thing. Admission to the sculpture park is free. They do accept donations. The trail is actually broken up into two loops. Total, it's 0.6 miles. So another cool thing about this is that they actually have a self-guided tour. At the very entrance of the trail, there is a QR code that you can scan and it will take you to their website and you can basically follow along and watch little video clips about the different um, art pieces here. Look at this one. This is how I feel some mornings when I wake up. Like you don't have the upper part of your body? Well, my legs are stiff and made of wood. So as you come around this one corner, there's this T-Rex sculpture made out of wood that kind of pops out at you. It looks so perfectly situated because honestly, this looks like it could be from Jurassic Park. And this guy kind of just, you know, realize my worst fears of getting eaten by a Tyrannosaurus Rex in the Pacific Northwest. Everyone thinks it's Sasquatch you have to worry about, but you know, the T-Rex population, it's getting up there. We really enjoyed the sculpture park. It's pretty cool. You should really check it out if you're nearby. Just keep an eye on the entrance because it's kind of hidden. Now that 0.6 miles has made us ravenous and we're actually going to head to Oak Harbor and go to one of our old haunts where we think they have pretty daggone good fish and chips. Mm -hmm. 
So we are at a little place called Seabolt's Fish and Chips, or Seabolt Seafood. Is that what they go by? Something like that. Anyway, it's located right here on Route 20 in Oak Harbor. From what we remember, when we were here in the military, they have amazing fish and chips. Specifically, the halibut was probably always my favorite, so I'm really excited to see if the quality still stands up to what it used to be. So, uh, what, what did you want? You know I had seafood and that's why you're out? Okay, well, I, I didn't bring you back any seafood. Are you smelling the leftovers? Whew, okay, we are absolutely stuffed. It was just as good as we remembered. It was like, kind of like tasting home again. Kita's mad because I didn't bring her any. She wants to eat it. I don't think she should have fried seafood. We have a reservation tonight at Fort Casey State Park Campground. So that's where we're gonna spend the night and that's where we're gonna head next. So we have settled down in our campsite here at Fort Casey for the night. Believe it or not, in the million years that we've lived here, we've never visited this park. There's a little dock across the street we used to put our boat in. We've never come and explore the park itself. And the fort here is actually massive and I'm, I'm super impressed because I had no idea. Um, yeah, it's way, way bigger than Fort Ward, the one we showed you in our last video. Something else that's really cool about this is that they actually have artillery pieces. And I'm gonna use that poor cruise ship as an example and you'll be able to see what I'm talking about. So this is one of the artillery pieces and you can see the cruise ship out here. So it kind of gives you a general idea of that whole triangle of defense we were talking about when we were at Fort Warden. I can't. Come on, you can do it. No, I can't. So in this room, we're actually trying to walk through the fort and there's a little bird on top of uh, that light there. You're not gonna be able to see it. It's kind of it's dark in here. Nest, but that's not the problem. There's another one sitting over here guarding it. You're also not gonna be able to see him, but. And he already flew out at us when we tried to, when we came in the door. <laughs> so I'm trying to talk Sandy into going in there. No, don't do it. Don't do it. So I switched lenses so you can see. There's the nest, there's mama sitting on top. And if we come around to the corner here, there's papa right there. Just hanging out. I don't know if we can get him any brighter. Yeah, right there we go. Hey buddy. So this morning we've made our way to the Admiralty Head Lighthouse, which is also here on the grounds of Fort Casey State Park. The original lighthouse here was built in 1861, and this one was actually built in 1903. It hasn't been in use since 1922. It was extinguished back then, but it is open for tours every day during the summer, which is when we're here in the month of July. You can come see it between 12 and 4, so we're going to go in and see if we can see some beautiful views of the surrounding area here and Fort Casey. So this is where the light would have been. It's not here anymore, but you can get a gorgeous, gorgeous view of the Puget Sound from up here. And it's nice because I'm the only one up here right now. We've always loved the small town of Coopville. So we knew we had to come back here and visit when we came. It's just a quaint little town right here on the water. We used to come down here for a restaurant that had some really great food. I don't think it's here anymore, or at least we couldn't find it. I mean, it has been 15 years, so. Um, but we're just, we came down here to walk down around the, the downtown area. It's very quaint, it's very picturesque and pretty. And then they have a dock here that we're walking down. It says gifts, food, and coffee, so we're gonna hop in here and see what there is. And Probably then, gifts, food, and coffee. Yes, and then we're gonna walk around town a little bit. It's kind of, it's a little nostalgia, you know?
So this little pier has a couple of shops in it and a couple of restaurants that are closed. Everything seems to be closed here until Thursday through Sunday, everything seems to be open. Today's Wednesday. Nothing's open. Actually, there there is a place open. And we're gonna go there. We're gonna go there right now because... <laughs> Ice cream. <laughs> I was gonna say history makes Jed hungry. Oh, well that too. He always gets hungry. Everything he does makes him hungry. Talking to the camera makes me hungry. Come here. Tina. pretty damn good. It's pretty tasty ice cream. So we're at Kapal's. Ice cream, I-S-K-R-E-M-E. -E. And it's the worldwide headquarters, so you know. I'm gonna photobomb you. It's awesome. It's okay. Hi. <laughs> Hi guys. <laughs> so um, I have some matcha, a praline pecan, and salted caramel in their homemade waffle cone. And this location is actually the original location of Seattle's Best Coffee. This was the original there's this dog falling downstairs. He's okay. Just a little scared, I think. Really good coffee. Yeah, and this was their original shop opened here in Coopville before, you know, they became a nationwide brand. That's crazy. I don't even think I knew that when we lived here. But mm -hmm. you didn't tell them what flavors you got. I've got um, flavors running all down my fingers right now because I'm talking, but. I'm about let you. <laughs> Weird. So we have strawberry, maple nut, and cookies and cream. Mm. Yeah, so we're going to enjoy this while we walk around this cute little town, but we'll show you some views here because this little downtown area is super, super cute. It's pretty much just one street here called Front Street, but there's some really older buildings and I think it's absolutely adorable. I think it's such a quaint, picturesque little town. Good morning. So last night we made our way to Deception Pass State Park where we stayed. Um, just for the record, it is very hard to get into this state park for camping reservations. It is the most popular state park in the Washington State Park system and rightfully so because this place is absolutely gorgeous. Now if you've ever watched the movie The Ring, you're going to recognize this landmark. Well, the American version. So the most impressive thing in this state park has to be Deception Pass and the Deception Pass Bridge, which we're going to get to shortly. Deception Pass was named when explorers came to the pass. They thought it was leading somewhere else. They said it was deceptive. <laughs> I mean, that's that's pretty much the, the history in a nutshell. We like to name things literally back in the day. So we parked at a little parking lot down on North Beach inside the park and they now have a trail that you can actually walk up here to the bridge. So we walked up to the bridge and we're going to walk across. It is a little crazy. It's a narrow bridge. The pathways are narrow. It's very busy. Hopefully there'll be some spectacular views from out in the middle. Walking out on the bridge is really beautiful. If you're afraid of heights like me, it's a little nerve wracking. The traffic is so close to you. But now we're gonna show you hopefully some better views of the bridge. We're gonna go head over to the Goose Rock Summit and see if we can't see the entire bridge. So we had planned to just kind of do a quick out and back up to Goose Rock. And then when we got up there, we saw that the trail kind of continues on around. So we decided to do this perimeter trail and we came around the corner and there's some actually some really beautiful views of Cornet Bay. But no bridge views. So no bridge views. If you so want bridge views, this is not, you were gonna say something? I was gonna say, we're gonna find them. Yes, yes, we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna find, find them. Don't worry. But yeah, it's still a beautiful hike. So if you're looking for a hike, it's not super hard going up the side that we went because we kind of were kind of doing a counterclockwise. So we had some elevation gain and then we had a lot of steep down and then we've had a little bit back up. So it hasn't been so far bad overall. We have no idea how long this is. It's 2.1 miles rated moderate. Is it? Yes. Okay, that's what it is. <laughs> Just finished with the Goose Rock Trail. Now we're headed down to Little North Beach and hopefully this is where we're gonna get some views of the bridge. Actually it is, because I can see it from here. So we 
found that bridge view for you. How's that? It's absolutely gorgeous down here. The beach is incredible. Just watch out for the wake as these boats come through because it almost got us. The state park here, Deceptive Pass State Park, just celebrated its 100 year anniversary. It was actually, this park was opened in 1922. The park actually is on two different islands and is kind of connected together by the Deception Pass bridge that you see here. So the southern part of the park is on Whidbey Island and then the northern part of the park is on Fidalgo Island. Construction of this bridge started in 1934 and it was opened in 1935. And this guy actually sees over 20,000 vehicles a day. That's a lot for such a small bridge. It's only 30 feet wide. You notice when we were walking up there, it's pretty narrow. So if you're afraid of heights, just look forward and just keep driving until you're amongst the trees again. And try to ignore the bouncing as uh, the other vehicles cross with you. Sadly, our time on Whidbey Island has come to an end. But no worries, there are more ferries in our future. In our next video, we're headed to the amazing San Juan Islands. So be sure to like this video, hit that subscribe button, hit the notifications bell, and until next time, stay, stay wonderful. wonderful.